Mircea Eliade and Owen Barfield together write about the making of place, about the creation of spaces that are sacred. They become sacred by virtue of people investing them with meaning. We give something of ourselves, we put our will into a moment, into something that is inanimate, and we imbue it with something special, with life. It's this remarkable ability to take a place, a moment in time, the same as any other, and just put our feet down, and declare it to be different. And then, having been declared, it transforms. It is forevermore made special. October 7th, from now on, is marked. It's sewed into the fabric of your lives. I'm about to begin a process called a ring warming ceremony. This is something that Mike and Emily wanted to do with all of you. The bands that they will exchange in just a few minutes are going to be passed through the room. We ask that you take a moment to hold them and to invest them with the warmth of your hands and your love and your best wishes for the couple. A little over seven years ago, I was sitting in Mike's dorm room watching a movie when I turned and looked at him and said, you know, you would really love my friend Emily. On paper, it made absolutely no sense. See, I'm already crying. One of you lived in Boston and went to school in DC. One of you lived in Long Island and went to school in upstate New York. We were 18 and 19. No one at that age can get set up long distance and make it work. No one at any age can get set up long distance and make it work. But I couldn't stop thinking about how crazy you would be about each other. Mike wasn't like most of the guys at Union, or most of the guys anywhere. He didn't drink. He wore jorts. <laughs> he was in a band that sang an eight-minute song that only included the word bacon. <laughs> I know some of you were too, so I blame all of you. And after just a couple of months of knowing him, I could tell that he was one of the most genuinely kind, loyal, and wonderfully weird people I had ever met. Em, you were never a stereotype. While Molly and I were busily planning our weddings in second grade, you looked at us like we were insane. We may have been. While we traded off playing the princess and the evil queen, you decided to be the evil queen's ferocious pet tiger who mauled the escaping princess. <laughs> People who didn't know you particularly well used to say to me, your friend is really quiet. I would just laugh and walk away. You are a constant in my life and in the lives of all of the people you decide to let in. No one is quicker to offer an ear, a shoulder, a backbone, or a sarcastic comment. So first I'm gonna talk about Mike. You're amazing, obviously. Everybody knows that, everybody here knows that. I wanted the best for my big sister, and when I met you, I knew that that's what I got. You are the best for her, and I'm so happy. The one thing that I think has brought them together and was mentioned in various different forums here and, and last night is they're both very weird. <laughs> So it's, it's one thing to be cool uh, and confident and compassionate and smart and strong and incredibly good looking. And that weirdness is the, is the true bond that brings them together. That weirdness of being able to collect uh, animal skulls and to binge watch obscure television shows. All of those things are, are the things that make them unique and that will sustain them as they go through their later years of marriage.
the two of you finally met, it was obvious to everyone that my hunch was right. Obviously. <laughs> People like to romanticize relationships. Books, movies, songs, they all let it play out the same way. Boy meets girl, boy gets girl, boy loses girl, boy overcomes the odds and wins girl back. Roll credits. But that's not how life and marriage really go. From day one, you two were never afraid of putting in the time and effort. You got to know each other over texts, absurdly long phone calls, and weekend visits that started and ended with very long train rides. You waited more than three years to be in the same city for more than a couple of weeks at a time, and you never wavered. I have absolutely no doubt that together you can handle whatever life throws at you, and that you'll do so with the same unique senses of humor and senses of selves that you do everything, and that everyone here loves you for. Now the people who did this first um, don't get to share in this experience in quite the same way, which I'm really actually sad about because these are these are actually physically warm, um, which I didn't know whether to expect that or not. And I think it's kind of beautiful. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> Emily, repeat after me. Just as I did yesterday. Just as I did yesterday. And just as I will tomorrow. And just as I will tomorrow. I choose you. I choose you. I would rather share one lifetime with you. I would rather share one lifetime with you than face all the ages of this world alone. Than face all the ages of this world alone. One of the reasons that we're here together is to celebrate what you've given to each other. But I wanted to remind you to look out because everyone who's here, in some way, you've changed their lives. And throughout your lives together, you're going to meet hundreds of thousands of people and you're going to change their lives. You've changed mine, so thank you. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ nor no man ever loved. Cheers.
my friends. By the power vested in me by you and nobody <laughs> else in particular. <laughs> I am thrilled to pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss each other. <laughs>